Let's talk about the recording space. Now, there's two things you want in recording space. You want a room that's quiet, and you want a room that sounds good. So let's talk about the quiet part first. The quiet part, there's not a whole lot you can do about it really in a domestic space. In other words, if you have a room that's really noisy, there's trucks going by, airplanes flying over, you could soundproof the room. But a lot of people don't understand the difference between soundproofing and acoustic, this stuff, acoustic foam on the walls. People put this on the walls all the time and say, hey, I have soundproofed. Or they put egg crates on the walls or do all kinds of other dumb stuff or blankets or whatever. Now, the truth is the only thing that's going to stop sound is mass, bricks, walls, thick, heavy, big stuff. And so if you want to soundproof a room, typically the way you would do that is you float the floor on some sort of rubber blocks and build an entire new floor on top of the existing floor. Then you build entirely new walls about a foot inside of the existing walls with dead airspace in between them. And then you do something crazy in the ceiling. You build a new ceiling that's underneath the original one. And by now you're figuring out that this is getting expensive and complicated. And if your room wasn't really big to start with, if you move all those walls in, your room has now gotten a lot smaller. And on top of that, if you do succeed in building your walled in super quiet room, now you've got to get air in and out of there because you probably want to breathe air that's at a temperature that is comfortable for humans. So it can be done, but it is complicated. So in most domestic environments, you really don't have a lot of options for soundproofing. So hopefully you are in a quiet place. Now let's talk about making the room sound good. This is something you can do something about. Remember Mr. Foam we were talking about? Uh, this stuff is really intended for stopping sound from bouncing around a room. So I don't know what you can hear, but if I go like this, you don't really hear much echo in the room. And if you have a room that's really square with really hard walls that are all parallel, it's gonna usually sound like a racquetball court. Um, if you don't have any treatment up on the walls, it'll go That's what's called a standing wave, which is this. Complicated, right? Woo! Standing waves are what cause those ringing sounds, and they can happen at any frequency depending on the length of the walls. And if you really read up on the math about this, it's crazy complicated. So you want to avoid standing waves. So how do you do that? Foam. Um, if you put foam on the walls, like what's above my head right now, like that stuff, um, that's what stops standing waves in a room. And I've got some other foam over there. And really this room probably could use a little more, but anything that is junk lying around, like this stuff, um, and foam on the walls, and anything that breaks up those hard walls, those hard parallel walls, will really help your standing wave situation. Another thing that's really great for standing waves is if the walls are not exactly parallel, which almost never happens in regular houses. But if you ever go to a fancy recording studio, look at the walls. They're never parallel. And the reason for that is because that totally stops standing waves from happening. Another tip I'm going to give you that isn't necessarily directly related to vocal recording, but it definitely relates to how your room sounds, is sound tends to uh, couple to walls. In other words, if you take your speakers and you put them right against a wall, you're going to get weird bass response, even though they're actually not facing the wall. And if you put speakers in the corner, it's even worse because bass builds up in those areas. And that's why in my studio, for example, I don't know if you can tell, but if you look, that's my back wall and there's a fair amount of space down there. I've got about four feet between my speakers and the walls and I've got my speakers firing the long way down the room. And all of this is making the best use of the space and making things sound the most neutral. So this takes us to our next topic, which is vocal booths. A lot of people like to record vocals in a vocal booth. And a lot of the time you sort of improvise vocal booths by throwing people in closets or little tiny rooms. And this, can be problematic, and here's why. First of all, if you're in a little room with walls that are really close to each other and no damping, you'll get that standing wave problem I was talking about, and it can be really bad in those rooms, and you hear these, it's like being in a shower, and that sounds terrible, so you don't wanna do that. Um, what I've done with my vocal booth over there that you can't see is I put a lot of foam on the walls, and since I built it, I made the main big wall 
completely at an angle, so it really cuts down in standing ways. But even at that, um, before I put up any of the foam in there, even with my big angled wall, it sounded like a racquetball court in there. So the easiest way to tell if you have a nasty standing wave problem is to clap your hands. Now, you don't hear any of that in this room because I've got it pretty well treated. But if you walk into a room and clap your hands and it goes, you'll know instantly that that room is not a good sounding room. Let's talk about a few other aspects of extraneous noise, as it were. Um, when I was younger, I used to watch this video for Guns N' Roses' Patience. And uh, here, let's look at that. Okay, hopefully they don't sue us. Now, I used to watch Axl Rose with this like 300 pounds of bracelets and chains and belt chains and all that stuff. So if you have a singer walk in uh, who has all that stuff, make sure they take it off so you don't record the sounds of metal jangling. Also, um, there's a singer I used to record all the time who had a really nasty habit of tapping her foot really loud because she was into it and I had wood floors. So it was literally like a drum kind of going <laughs> and you'd record that into the song. So you really have to be careful of that. Now, a lot of that can be alleviated by uh, Mr. Shock Mount, which I didn't really talk about in the other video. And you probably already have one of these if you have a big condenser mic and you're probably aware of what it does. But if you're not, um, a shock mount is literally intended to prevent shocks. So not of the electrical nature, but of the physical nature. So when you do have this on a mic stand and somebody's banging on the floor, in theory, it should prevent that vibration and thus bass thump from getting into your recording. So you definitely want a shock mount and that's why. But even at that, these don't prevent every kind of noise from getting through. So just be aware Listen with the big ears when you're recording. Listen for any extraneous weird sounds, whether it's animals making noise or uh, people thumping or clapping or snapping their fingers. And, and sometimes the snapping actually, actually can help. Um, I know Michael Jackson was a big snapper. The snapping you gotta be careful of because for some reason that I don't understand, snaps can record really, really hot. So they can be, the singer can be singing and it's fine but you get these transients with the snaps that are distorting your preamp input. So you gotta be really careful about that. And singers probably won't take well you nitpicking every little noise they make, but trust me, you will be glad you did.